Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Rodeo Time, the podcast. We got DB over here on the soundboard mixing it up, and I am doing just that. I kind of have had a hard time, you know, like uh, doing some. Whoop, doing some of the. Do, I'm on the soundboard. Hey, that's what I was looking for earlier. Some of those. Should be a DJ. Uh, what does this button do? There it is. Hey. Yeah. Or. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I guess you put crickets what is on that? that. Is that crickets? Crickets. crickets. That's yeah. crickets? We're, I should have used that for most of the stuff you Insects. said. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Insects. Yeah. <laughs> what is a cricket? <laughs> that's, that's for the uh, tickle part. Oh, that's what I was looking for yeah. when we talked about the crummy greeter at the church. <laughs> Look out for that story. Um, yeah, so this... Po- <laughs> all right. I could have supplemented all your jokes there. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just now learning the soundboard. Um, we had a great podcast. We meet Mr. Lane Snyder and Cole's other older brother and um, from the same mother and arguably the reason he's here. My mom? Yeah, she's definitely the reason he's here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she played a pivotal yeah. role. <laughs> Real um, key. Dare talk, I say irreplaceable. <laughs> talk about uh, just what our stand-up comedy routines would be about, leather leather work, some advice from Leroy, a few stories on um, yeah, some books that we're reading, life advice, hold on for that at the end. Um, but, yeah, we've got the original intern, Lane Snyder. I forgot to say that. He was the <laughs> original intern, and we'll go into more detail, and then our most recent intern. So, yeah. Wow. I never thought about that. And yeah. it's like Whoa. the 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 first and the most recent. So an eleven year span in between. Yeah. Wow. Things have really your standards have done nothing but drop. Also yeah. Yeah. to uh <laughs> that you're hiring a new intern. Yeah, and we go into details about the new intern position that'll listen, be open. Listen available. To that and, uh, yeah. If you're interested if you're interested in that, nine four oh three five three oh eight nine oh um, and my only plug of the whole podcast, check out Daleware on dalebrisby.com. Now on to the podcast. You need to come up with a, like a Mike Jones to your phone. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Rodeo Time Podcast. Well, we do intros at the end, so we can just do that later. But and here we are. Sorry. You haven't done one of these in a minute. Yeah, I know it's been a couple of weeks. So in the house, Mr. Uh, Lane Snyder. Oh, it's confusing. Like, wait, he's got a twin brother. It's yeah, not his I twin. Don't, I've never. I yeah. I don't see it. I you don't, don't get it. Uh. Uh-uh. I don't get it. We <laughs> have different parents. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we get that. Yeah. What's the what's the gap between you guys? Five years. Five years. And then there's a younger one. It's five years below me. Man. Yeah. That's a spread. Yeah. Well, and then we have an unplanned sister. That's not how it went. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess I don't know the technicalities. But unplanned sister. She's in there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's between Lane and I. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I remember, you know, growing up in a small town, everybody's like, oh, you're Lane's, you're Lane's little brother. And then I kept moving further and further away. And pretty soon, you know, I didn't get that a lot. And I thought, I'd, well, I'll move further away from home. Then surely nobody will say that there. And uh, first thing that happens when I moved to Texas, you know what? You look just like a guy we used to have here. <laughs> You just can't get away from it. No, it's a curse. Yeah, but he's the reason you are here. (laughs) (laughs) Lane was actually um, the OG. Not really. It wasn't even an intern program when you came on. But it was unspoken. Right. Is somebody's music going on? (laughs) And it was actually through, through our... Hey, will somebody turn that off? I got it. Is that a is that somebody's ringtone? Hey, will somebody turn that off? <coughs> it's what? 
I can still hear it through the headphones. <laughs> yeah, just just remind them that. Mecca. Uh, there yeah. you go. I think she might have told them. Yeah. The whole reason that the company works. Yeah. Is because remind of the videos. Them this is why. You can't monetize the videos if you got music playing in it. Yeah. Um. Anyways. <clears throat> and we're back. What were we talking about? Lane was the OG intern. Lane was the OG intern. Kind of created more through my old man than anybody. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't even, I wasn't even there at that school. You, I think you, so you, you were there. Well, cause we met you and your dad there like over the weekend <clears throat> in New Caney. Right? Yeah. And then we had Austin with us and Austin called me on a Monday cause you told us pony we, boy, we, pony boy, we can come back <laughs> anytime and get on bucket orders. That's what Pop said. So, uh, do I need to get closer? Yeah. yeah. You mumble. Yeah. All right. So anyway, he he literally told me on a Monday that he had talked to you guys. And he was like, dude, they said we'd come down. we get on as many bucking horses as we want. And I was like, sweet, dude. That sounds awesome. Like, I'll go. Like, when are you going? And he was like, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. Well, you should call him and ask if I can come. And if that were, if they say I can come, like. I'm in. And, uh, yeah, so then I'm not a no joke, like, bought a ticket, packed a bag, and we left. And then we came down here, and it was, like, Super Bowl weekend. And it was, like, snowing. This is after. It was, like, I didn't even bring a jacket because it was Texas, right? Yeah. And it was Super Bowl weekend, and we got a, we got held up in Denver because they told us snow equipment doesn't exist in Texas. Right. Snowed three inches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so eventually we got here and then made our way to the ranch. And then, dude, it was it was kind of awesome. We didn't get on bucking horses for like the first week. And then finally, <coughs> once the snow melted, dude, it just kind of, uh, it turned into Austin left. And then I just started working on the ranch. Yeah, you stayed for a long time. Austin was yeah. only there for a few weeks that first trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then... Uh, uh, you guys want to get on bucking horses? All right, here's a weed eater. Uh, <laughs> actually, here's two weed eaters. Yeah. I'll go weed eat all 22 miles of fence line. And, and then... then uh, we can ride horses. Yeah, and then that summer, we, we we entered a bunch of rodeos. Yeah, yeah. Me, you, and Greaser. Yep. Yep. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that was uh, yeah that was a good summer. Yeah, we, we worked and worked for Pop. And, and uh, what, what year was that? It's like 10 or 11, right? I don't know. I was trying to think because it was before my daughter was born. Yeah. So it had to have been like 2010, 2011. I want to, yeah. That's right. I don't remember if it was, yeah. Maybe. 10, you're, maybe 11. Right. I think it was 11. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Summer of 11. 11 years ago. My, how long's it been? That's one. 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't even a thought yet. I, yeah, you I was even born yet. I was in middle school. Well, yeah. I was born, but just nobody was thinking about him. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Not much different than now, actually. <laughs> you were, how old, 11 years ago, how old were you? I would have been 16. Okay. Yep. Yeah, 16 or something. Could barely talk. Did yeah. not have dry, yeah, <laughs> bare, could barely talk. Could barely uh, talk. Yeah, I was still didn't Just have learning to read. I was still that guy like, oh, you want to go on a date? Yeah, sure. It's like, all right, my mom will pick us up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it like y'all growing up? Well, I mean, we were pretty pretty close-knit family, uh, mostly because dad didn't believe in TV channels, and uh, we lived in a... We Just the channels? Yeah, didn't we? like the yeah. TV. Love TV. Oh, we had a TV. We have lots of TVs we got through the years. Everybody, <laughs> and it was kind of like a cool deal. As TVs got more modern and slimmer, the Snyder TVs would get bigger and larger until all of a sudden they, it took up like the whole living room. But it was always great. We never had to pay, buy a TV. It only lasted a couple months. But, um, yeah, we all lived in a trailer. Lane, myself, and our little brother, we shared a room until you shared a room until you moved out. Right. Our, our sister shared it. Last in, year. Yeah. <laughs> Our sister, she had her own room and everything, but um yeah, I just remember we yeah, we that was it was pre we were all pretty close. We had the creek nearby and uh yeah, I remember just uh, 
messing around in the woods and everything, the, the creek down there. We went to junior rodeos a lot. Our dad would take us there. And, um, like, you know, Lane, Lane was riding bulls, and uh, and I was just kind of, well, I'm not going to lie, I was a dummy roper at the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sixth place. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, we did that. We always grew up around horses and everything, and um, just kind of just kind of country kids, you know, uh, yep. doing that. Lane, Lane was at a feed store, bucked a lot of hay. Oh, sorry, I'm telling your story. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was it. We were just, yeah, really close because we all had to, they said we all had to share a room. We all, you know, you have you have to get along. Right. And um, I remember everybody would always pick on me, like the prime example. Oh. We had a Survivor board game, right, you know, from the show. And I got voted off first every time we played. <laughs> Not just like sometimes I got voted off first. I got voted off first every time we played. <laughs> And then my little brother came around, and I was like, perfect. I'm not going to, no longer the child of the family. Will picked on me just like the rest of everybody. So to this day, I've never made it past the first round of Survivor. <laughs> so that, that, that defines you as a family member. I think it defines me as a person, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so brothers, you know each other. You've been through not only a similar program, but almost the identical program he's going through. What was like your biggest takeaway? Like looking back, it's been a decade. Like what was like the thing that maybe you still might think of occasionally? From my time? Yeah. Dude, we are just, we are just talking about this when we went to pick Cole up the other day. He's like, I spent a lot of time with your dad. Right. For where it was every Every single day for everything we were doing was like lessons and just like learning things without even realizing you're like learning them. Yeah. But like one of the biggest things is like <clears throat> he helped me make, uh, like really shaped to where I am today Uh huh. by like, I don't know, just like spending all that time with him being like him going through how like your guys' whole family, how much he loved you guys. And it was just like, man, I could do that. And that, yeah. that's what ended up helping me like decide to leave. Yeah. You know, I planned on coming back a lot sooner, but yeah, I mean, that was what initially I was like, man, I can need to be like this guy and I can go, you know, start my family. Right. Which I did. And yeah. It's kind of, it was a big influence on me. Yeah. I think about that every day, you know? Yeah. So. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably like maybe the, I, I could see why that would be not only the biggest, but maybe the most important. Yeah. But anything like specific to. We were looking for something like more fun. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we didn't do a lot of laughing back then. So. <laughs> False. <laughs> well. Or an experience, something that stands out. What I was going for is if you have any ex- advice for him to get the most out of it. Oh, well, Dad, Dad died, so sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say listen to everything he's got to say a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you're just not gonna get the same experience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead and tell you we'll be subpar compared to. <laughs> I don't know. To it's just the same advice that I would give anybody, right? It's like if you don't know how to do something, let somebody know that you don't know how to do it. Which I know no. I don't have to tell you. Ah, no. I mean, maybe I do, but like, if you don't know how to do it, let them know. Because at a certain point, if you're the person saying, like, oh, I got this, I know what I'm doing, and you don't, it'll work its way out, like, in the wash, you know? Like, yeah. That's a real, like, old school cowboy way of, like, oh, you got it? You don't need my help? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you got it. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. No, that's uh, <clears throat> that's a, that's super good advice, just because... Um, yeah, there's nothing more frustrating than somebody that, and, and your brother's not like this. We definitely have had interns here, you know, and I'm not afraid to admit when someone might know more than me, but it, mm-hmm. there was like, there's like some interns that are just like, like, hold on. Hey, you came here to learn this thing, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you trying to educate me, but like you came here to learn this from me, you know, not vice versa you know not only do i know that you don't know more than me but uh anyway but that's just kind of cow you know cowboy in, in general like most all cowboys are going to be super 
eager to help someone if they are willing to be helped, right. you know? So, but that person that thinks they know everything. And sometimes it's not that it's not like a conscious, like I know more than you. It's just like almost like <clears throat> a pride thing of trying to prove themselves, mm-hmm. you know, which right. is what I've, I've noticed, which guys are bad about, you know, some girls are, but not as many, you know, it's not as good of a blanket statement on girls, but guys are just like, sometimes we try to prove ourselves with other guys. And so it'll, it'll really keep us if we, if we could just skip to the part where everybody knows that we don't know as much as we'd like to in that area and then, you know, get humbled and being okay with everybody knowing that all of a sudden, then all of a sudden you're able to learn and you can get to that spot a lot quicker yeah. than, than as rather than just pretending, you know, a bunch about a subject and hoping someone doesn't ask you a question about it. I don't know. Does that make sense? No, yeah. for sure. Yeah, because I mean, dude, you can, you can what YouTube said. anything, right? And it's like, you get the gist of it. You go through, I could BS my way into, t- I could probably make anyone believe that I know what I'm talking about. If you gave me 15 minutes on Google right. or YouTube and you get in there, but it's like, that was something that I kind of like really got emphasized when I like started doing this. When I first got down here, it's like I've been to a couple uh, rodeo schools. Right. And then to, like, think I knew what I was doing. Yeah. I didn't know Jack. Kind of gets sniffed out pretty quick. <laughs> so yeah. Like, so, like, that's another thing about rodeo and a lot of things in the ranching industry. I'm sure in other industries, you know, sports or whatever, but um, it's hard. You can't fake it. Like, when the gate opens, or really it starts behind the chutes, like, when you start putting your set. Like, it's a very – it, it purifies each yeah. person. It's very revealing. Yeah. Like you can talk all you want, but as soon as the gate opens, none of it matters and you will be revealed. Right. You know, <laughs> you will be revealed. And uh, so that that's, that's something I told. I don't know why it came up because nobody talks like that around yeah. our interns. Nobody like, yeah. you know, shoots their mouth off like they're Del Brisby, but, you know. Yeah, that'd, just, be, that'd be weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Well, the reason why I told him is because I bought that buck right, and it was expensive. It's a it's a training tool for uh, bull riding. Yeah. And I told him, I was like, guys, you can tell me you're getting on it and practicing, but, like, when this gate opens, that's when it's going to show, <laughs> you know, because I'll sell it. I'll sell it out <laughs> from under y'all, you know, and I don't have to see you on it. You don't have to Snapchat me. I'm going to see it in your riding. And I guess the only unfair thing there would be, you know, there's a lot more mental things that come along with actually, you know, performing yeah. on the back of a bucking animal. We pretty much had the same deal. Dad got us a mighty bronchi, and uh, it was, you know, they weren't, they don't, those things aren't cheap. And uh, we had a cement pad for it and everything, and all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. And um, we didn't really like it was, it was a deal. Like we, we were always around rodeo and everything, but just we weren't, we didn't have a whole lot of buddies that rodeo, let right. alone rode saddle bronc courses. And around there, it was just kind of few and far between and it was one of those deals dad was like if you guys don't ride that it's like i'm getting rid of it and the only reason he didn't get rid of it i said because i think he couldn't lift it by himself so <laughs> like <laughs> probably should have gotten you know by that logic but i remember when yeah when lane came back from texas like all of a sudden it was the coolest thing ever like we'd right. have three or four bronc saddles out there and we'd just be riding riding this, the mighty bronchi you know all, all night and everything and that was just the coolest that was the coolest thing ever and like yep. um that was a big change like from one lane left to Texas versus when he came back, like you can't see it now, but you know, in high school lane didn't really wasn't all about setting goals. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm just kidding. No, but I just meant like, man, when when Lane came back, you know, he was. Uh, I remember two things. Three. One, he was super tan. Like that was that was weird. Uh, How much has changed smart. there? That was weird. Two, like his teeth were just offensively white. Like. <laughs> I don't know. It was just he couldn't like I couldn't describe it, but it was like I just remember when he left, like his teeth weren't that friggin' white. Like, <laughs> and thirdly, he was wearing all these different like clothing brands. Remember he had like a cactus hat on, and, like he had an Aggie rodeo shirt that I may or may not have stolen. Uh and I just remember like he was about all things rodeo and like none of us you gotta think our dad, like he was pretty old school rodeo and stuff. Like we didn't think that there could be guys like you that were like like cool. 
like I'm not saying cowboys weren't <laughs> cool, but I just mean you know like like cool young cowboys. Like it just wasn't. We didn't have any around, you know. Right. Um, all the young guys that we were around the rodeo and pretty much were just like drunk ropers, and it yeah. was you know that was that was tough. So I remember when Lane came back, it was uh, it changed it changed our whole family a lot because yeah. if probably if Lane hadn't gone to Texas and everything, it probably would have been easy for us all to give up like just to not rodeo anymore. Like we'd probably always been around horses, but rodeo was just kind of not wasn't a priority you know yeah um we were wrestlers and when he came back it was like our whole family we start like we were we were back in a rodeo again and like you could tell that's where our family was supposed to be you know all along but it's like we just didn't have there just wasn't that many people around and yeah i keep forgetting that you were a wrestler why yeah. have you have you and carson not wrestled no why not, not? Like he wants it, to wrestle everybody i, I don't know Hasn't come up. Hand, nice handshake. Want to wrestle? What are you talking about? Like, that's exactly what he... <laughs> no, that's, that, that's that what he legit does. legit happened to you and I in Oklahoma. A guy oh, walked yeah. up and was like, ah, cauliflower ears. Which one he wants to wrestle? <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, I mouthed yeah, off him. Carson like, oh, will yeah. just randomly ask people that, you want to wrestle? <laughs> and then he'll break down and go like this. And <laughs> he'll <laughs> growl. Yeah, we, we, maybe tonight after dinner. Make that oh, okay, yeah. yeah so we sound, can make that Sounds good, yeah. And at Dude, Brothers. Do you, do you have your, your ear things? I Yeah, couch? I never leave without them. No, I don't have them. <laughs> well, I didn't know. Like, it was just, you know, like Sleep some dudes <laughs> that keep their, uh, you know, their football jersey from college. They hang it on the wall. I didn't know if it was like a thing for wrestlers. I'm not, I've never wrestled in school. Maybe, maybe some guys. I, I don't know. I, I In saying it, I was saying it'd be funny if you had them in your back pocket. And he's like, you want to wrestle? <laughs> yeah, hold on. <laughs> oh, you sure. mean these? Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Well, speaking of Lane's shirts, do you remember when we went to church that one time? This is a great story. We, we talked about this the other day. This. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you tell it. Let me see if it's the same. Uh, I, like and I kind of I remember it really fragmented, but it was really uh, not traumatizing at the time. But I was like, <laughs> "This is this yeah. is not the eye opening. This wasn't yeah. the one for me." Uh, yeah, we I don't even remember. We were we drove a long way to get to to a big old church somewhere, and I like specifically put on. I bought a brand new. T-shirt. It was a fant a grape Fanta T-shirt because I didn't have a whole lot of clothes down here to begin with. Nor money. Yeah, I remember that. It was Target. <laughs> it was like eight dollars for these awesome graphic tees. Exactly. I bought a bunch too. Looks nice. Yeah, it fits it was nice. Slick purple. Uh, anyway, but I bought it. It was like the newest shirt I had. So I was like, oh, put on my nice T-shirt and we'll head to church. <laughs> we like yeah so to. we'll we'll break it up now yeah. my side of that yeah. Yeah. Shirt yeah. On yeah. is like um y'all are staying at my house in college and my i had the master bedroom in the back and uh i come down the hall and Leroy obviously out cold <laughs> it's a sunday morning <laughs> like no chance of him waking up i went at 9 30 no you didn't yes i did you were not there i swear to you I went to church with y'all. Yes, I remember. Oh, it was me and this joker. <laughs> I, 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 I remember this like it was yesterday. You might have heard me tell the story enough times that you think that, but no, you didn't go. I was there because we were ahead of y'all. We walked in, and then y'all walked in behind us. <clears throat> I was there. Anyhow. He was asleep. So <laughs> I walked by, and you might have even said, where are you going? I was like, I'm going to church. You want to go? You were. Oh, yeah. you were in the in the living room. In the living room. Either on the couch or on the ground. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm going to church. You want to go? And you were like, yes, I just got this brand new shirt. And you like <laughs> put it on. And I was like, okay, great. And I did, or I might have even said, okay, great. And then like, <laughs> 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 you know what? I think that's what I said. <laughs> and then we left. Okay, great. <laughs> and, uh, and okay, now you pick it back up. Dude, I just remember like we got, I don't know, we got to this like, decent size church it was like a bigger it was a bigger church it was a mega, big church it was a mega church right? it's a big it church big. Okay. the no, biggest I've church been, in that town i don't know how big things <laughs> actually get in texas i wasn't sure what the size difference if was not mega be, right? borderline mega right it, it was huge right but so there's a ton of people there and we were, we're like, late we we're coming in kind of late right at the end like just tailing because in. you had to put your shirt on I, I will. you made us late. <laughs> made us throw it in the dryer, get all the wrinkles out. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I just remember, like, I'm following you in, like, trying to be quiet, take my hat off, like, walking through. And all of a sudden, like, like I was breaking, like, I was trying to go behind the counter at a bank. Uh, these two guys <laughs> just slowly step in front of me, like, in between you and me. And one puts his hand on my chest and says, whoa, like, are you coming in here dressed like that? <laughs> and I was like, what? He's like, I mean, it's church. It's the nicest clothes you got? And I was like, excuse me? Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. Like, I thought I thought yeah. this was a church. Right. <laughs> and he yeah. was like, oh, I mean, it is. It, you know, and then they're like, they kind of like laughed and like went. And I was like, man. Yeah. So <clears throat> in the exchange, in the moment, I was just like, he kind of played it off as a joke. <laughs> And then when we <laughs> sat down, it was just like the the gravity of what he said. It was just like, because I was standing right next to you, and I was just like, "Oh man, they weren't joking." Yeah, like it just took like it was just like no earthly world would we have thought to say that. And in my mind, like it didn't register right away with me because I was like, "There's just no way that was for real." And then as we walked away, by the time I got sat down, that's whenever it like really hit me that, that it wasn't a joke. Right. That was the last time I went there. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped in. I did stop. I had a friend getting baptized there later. Yeah. Went in, watched the baptism, left. So. Well, it was, was it, it is one of those churches that I think it's televised too. Maybe but locally, not, not like oh, okay. a, not like. I'm I mean, not you defending can't. them. I'm just saying like, <laughs> yeah. hey, you did look, I mean, you did look on, like man. garbage. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be on TV, yeah. man. Are you sure you want to wear that? <laughs> this is a nice church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Looks over at me. Where'd you get this hobo? <laughs> People in there aren't <laughs> that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They probably looked at each other yeah. after you walked off. Can you believe that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to come to You church. don't need to clean this until after everyone leaves. <laughs> What's with this guy? <laughs> like uh like at the dinner table with the uh, at Step Brothers when he's like He's like, yeah, it's a trophy fish. <laughs> <laughs> and the other guy goes, what's his deal? <laughs> what's his deal? Before we get too yeah. far, I, in case listeners, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> in case listeners drop off, I don't personally think like I knew that yeah. pastor. Yeah. Only in passing, um, I never, I never had a conversation with him again after that, unfortunately. But like, I really felt like that might not have been like a true representation of the entire church. I felt like it was. You just walked in just the wrong the, door that had the one bad apple sitting there. That's what right. I thought. That's right. that, that's how I rationalized it later. You know, I, like I didn't go back. <laughs> I never <laughs> went back. Why would you um, let the one bad apple work the door though? Right. You. De- yeah. They definitely, I really wanted to send an email, not like yeah. a, a Karen, like, hey, you messed up my I don't burger. think that's a Karen email. Yeah. Uh, it was more just like, you really got to change your personnel right. up there. Just, you know, because like. Almost didn't let a kid into church because he was wearing a Target shirt. Right. Yeah. Like, and uh, and it was the nicest too, shirt he had. I, I later, so I ended up going to a different church. Um, Grace. Anyways, it's Bible. A little too late for you now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it all worked out. Their but, service is um, uh, live online, though. Yeah. So That's nice. Yeah, they uh great church. I still claim them as my church home. It's been hard to, even though I don't live, you know, close enough to go there every Sunday. But uh yeah, we, we, we watch online. I, I go to this church when I go in person, but I'll I still tie it down there. Anyways, whatever. Um hellacious undertaking, you were saying. Oh, I was just describe I was gonna describe like us going to church back in the day, you know. Uh mom would decide we were going to church like the morning the morning of, right? Yeah. And so it would just be, uh, there's six of us all in one house, all trying, and there's one bathroom with one tiny, like, leaky little shower that the hot water never shut off, ever. Um, but anyhow, I just remember, like, that the, the whole process to get to church and everything for Snyder's, we had it down pat. Like, the 30-second shower, uh, we'd, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's, there's a science to it, and I'm not good at it now. I, I take my time now. Yeah. But if, the, if you have to, you just, you get wet. Real quick, 
just on off, soap, head to toe, water till most of the soap's gone. The rest of it, I mean. Isn't that the process of every eyes. shower lane? I just mean, if you no, turn you definitely don't turn off. it off in the middle. Oh. Okay. You turn it you off turn in the middle? Off? What? Don't you? Doesn't everybody? I, I think. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> maybe people in the Navy or something. <laughs> uh, it's a drought. Yeah. I don't know. I think. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that broke my heart. Yeah. I remember because when Lane told me about that story, uh, it was, we were. Like I, it's not like he showed up at the door, and that was the story that he started with. Uh, it was like <laughs> you won't yeah, believe. Yeah. No, let me tell you about Texas. No, uh, <laughs> it was like a couple of weeks later or whatever. Uh, we were driving around, and that song, "The Outlaw Prayer" by yeah. with by Johnny Paycheck came on, and Lane was just you know like shut it off, and he goes, "I have to tell you this story that happened." <laughs> and, uh, like, Dang, um, this song, this song could yeah. not be more on the nose <laughs> to the yeah. story I'm about yeah. to tell you. Man, I was just so heartbroken at the thought of like, because I've got friends that literally I pray for maybe every day that I was just like, I know they're not Christians, you know, either because they told me or, you know, they've just said things that, you know. Um, Implied it. Right. And and so I'm just like, I'm like, all right, God put me on this earth for these two or three individuals, you know. And uh, man, like, what if... What if that it was one of them, you know, that had not ever been to church? That's their first experience, right. or they're legitimately considering it. But it's like they're going there not to check a box. They're going there because they want to learn about, yeah. like, what it is this Jesus guy, who I'm sure would have been elated to have a Fanta grape shirt, what it yeah. is that he did that's that's so wonderful. You know, like, that. that would be, anyway... Yeah, that was that was heartbreaking. Have you ever had a grape Fanta? They're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever worn the Target Fanta shirts? They're so yeah. comfortable. Yeah, not as comfortable as a rodeo time shirt from Dubrisby dot com. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, I wondered if you'd remembered that. I guess you had. <laughs> oh, it was pretty impactful for like a while. Like it was just, but it was one of those things. Did it kind of turn you like, off to like all church going for a little while? Um, no, yeah, but we, we all went to church after that quite a bit. I mean, we still, we did, I mean, we did down here, right? We went quite a bit. And then when I got back, like, it made me actually do a lot more of, like, reading the Bible myself. To yeah. be like, maybe, maybe I got it wrong. You know? <laughs> no <laughs> way. Everybody? I mean, I say everybody? Yeah. Maybe, maybe I had it wrong. Yeah. But. Um, What's crazy and ironic about it is he's the greeter. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has one job. <laughs> the last guy through the door. <laughs> 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 Imagine if what Walmart, the guy was like the last person to come in. Whoa. <laughs> some, you can't. Some, some, I can just see the meeting. Like they're looking for volunteers. Yep. I got this. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna put Jeff in charge of making sure everyone feels welcome. <laughs> and then they get Dale's email, and they're like, "Jeff, you're just supposed to say hi. That is it. That's your job. Don't comment on their clothing." Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Would you? Uh, would you drive here? <laughs> you walk here. <laughs> oh wait a sec. Where's the? Any other uh, specific um, things stand out except you, like, dislocating your shoulder nine times? Yeah, that happened quite a bit. Um, it happened more once you got back. That was a couple year-long thing. It's have a you, reoccurring thing. Have you had surgery? No. Yeah, I remember, no. like, in Snook it came out. We made it all the way back <laughs> to the ranch. And then, like, you, what did – I think he – did he have you, like, lay down on the table – face down and like you rolled your arm forward and it went back in right yeah i dude i've done it more ways than i can even remember but like a lot of them involve like lay on a table and like relax and uh let your arm flop around or like let me throw it over your head and eventually <laughs> yes it will go back in how many times has it come out It'd come out when you a were lot. sleeping after a while. Not yeah. that I was there. I, I'd heard about this. <laughs> yeah. Are you okay about that? <laughs> hey, hey, is your shoulder in the socket? 
Yeah, it was pretty bad for a while. But like maybe a dozen? Oh, at least. At least a dozen. Have oh, you thought yeah. about surgery? Uh, so before I was literally, so when uh, we originally came down here, I'd like went out of my way and got Aflac. It was like supplemental insurance to get shoulder surgery on top of my actual insurance. And so I would, I'd been building up money to get shoulder surgery. And then we came down, I came down here and then ended up not leaving. And then the feed store I was working for sold. So then my insurance was gone. So then by the time I made it back, it was like, eh, it's all for naught. And then I just have, I mean, it's fine. When was know. the last time it came out? Uh, probably a couple of years ago. Not doing anything exciting, really, probably. I was probably, like, reaching for something on the top <laughs> shelf. <laughs> yeah. I knew I should have got the step stool. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, So you know the motions you probably shouldn't do? Oh, yeah. It's it, Basically, if it goes anywhere, you know, if I was going to, like, throw a uh, football with my left hand, it's probably going to come out. Like, I mean, not anymore. Right. I'm, like, super strong now. I okay. You, I don't know if I told you guys this, but, yeah. But before... Concrete, a breeze concrete would heavy. a breeze would blow it out of the socket. It came out when we were jet skiing once. Yeah, you remember that? As I mean, yeah. it was like real hit or miss on like what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you didn't carry anything expensive in my left hand because I mean, my arm comes out. <laughs> <laughs> you just <laughs> my drop exactly. <laughs> yeah, but you never had as I guess that that's pretty serious just because it's reoccurring. But nothing like Cole's hand being in 19 different pieces no No. yeah no that was yep that was fun yeah i had my shoulder surgery it kept coming out how many times yours come out uh probably about a dozen it's like after that i was like "Mm -mm, when did it first come out um me and dad i don't remember what rodeo we were at might have been brian and I just landed weird, and it came out. And then after that, like me and Pop went riding, riding horses through the pasture, and we like not even a a good trot, just like a really slow trot, and just boop, dang came out. And all I had to do was put my thumb in my belt loop, and then just like lean over and just try to relax, and it would pop back in. And then uh, <laughs> two nights later, I don't know if you were still there or not. If we went to the bar and somebody hit me over the shoulder with a beer bottle, and then I couldn't get it back in for hours after that. Damn. And then, yeah, it was just, after that, it just kept happening. And every, almost every time I got on a horse, it would come out. Mine came out in uh, Bandera, but it only, it's only come out once. Yeah. Um, I tore the bottom of my shoulder out, so it didn't, it would pop in and it would just like sit in there. Yeah. And then, uh, they had to wire and screw it all in. You got it fixed though. Yeah, he uh, so he broke his collarbone at a bull riding, and then the next day I had shoulder surgery. And uh, Dad brings me home to where him and I are living in College Station, and he's laying on the couch, and he I guess just taking a pain pill. <laughs> and my dad gave me mine, took a pain pill. I'm laying, he's laying on the couch. I'm laying in the recliner. <laughs> we sat there all day and watched comedies and laughed our laughed our butts off. And Bob yeah. just sat there and was like, ah, I was taking my, a- You're still in my insurance. <laughs> 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 it. If I was taking a pain pill, that means it was my second break on that collarbone. It might yeah. have been. Three weeks after. Yeah. yeah anyway. They go with the pillow and the ball squeeze thing. Like a whole contraption on my arm. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. <clears throat> feel pretty left out that one yep. yeah you ripped no. your hand off dude it's, it's yeah pretty uh we can we can help we can help you join the club that's fine <laughs> that's fine no you don't want that do we <laughs> <laughs> you don't want no part of this uh yeah no uh zero zero minor minor still there is this your first internship i would well i mean kind of i don't know when i no i wouldn't it's say the first that. time you've ever been labeled an intern at a job I was at a job, not the Dragon Y, it was a joke. Like, I was on a, like, two-year or four-year internship. So was, <laughs> so was, so was Donnie. Uh, yeah. Like, that was, because it was just, because I was, like, Lane, I guess it was, you know, same deal. Like, 
That's why I had a lot of confidence just go ranching. I was like, yeah, if Lane could do it. Well, then it like got to the point where it was like, I can't ask Lane. Like, I've been doing this longer than Lane now. I was like, <laughs> he's not really helping me with any of these questions I have. Uh, so, yeah, no, I, I definitely, I, I struggled a lot. All the ranches I went to, I went at Greener, Green as a Gourd. Um, just had to, yeah, I just had to keep trying. And that same deal with Lane. I learned that lesson from Lane. You know, the whole, if you don't know something, just ask. I was a bit slower to that lesson. Sure, I know how to calve. Uh, yeah, I, I, I learned I learned that one the hard way, but that's we part should, of it. I recently put out. Uh, I sent the text today, looking for another intern, uh, our t- which would be our tenth intern. So focused primarily on booths. So I'm kind of just telling y'all, but also to the listeners, if you're interested in becoming an intern. Um, Text me the word intern, 940-353-0890. So text me the word intern. That way you get those messages. But uh, we're kind of in a hurry for this one. So if you're listening to this, you better send a video to Rodeo Time Instagram. But, yeah, so anyway, we're looking for a um, – <coughs> you looking, you, you, you looking for anything new? I mean, yeah. Uh, so the first time I came down here, <laughs> I just ended up staying, and that's – so I'm probably just going to end up staying. Okay. Uh, oh, great. <laughs> That's why you brought a U-Haul. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just passing through. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got through. Oh. My wife and kids have been sleeping in the car. I don't know if you guys let them come in the house. <laughs> yeah. No, we... Uh, no, your family's awesome. We... Uh, fun to have. This would be in charge of a booth. The booths. All the booths. So, like, driving to and from, setting it up, running it. Um, I mean, there'd be breaks for the person, but, <clears throat> but yeah, so, so we do Fort Worth, San Antonio, Houston. Those are each three week long booths. We just got back from California, which was, it was just two days, but it took us two days to get there on either side of the trip. So that was a six day trip total. Junior high finals, high school finals. Yep. Cheyenne, maybe. WRCA, no, not Cheyenne. Not Cheyenne. WRCA finals. State FFA convention, National FFA convention. Which all of those are about a week each. Most booths are like two, three, four days. But <clears throat> anyway, so it's becoming like a – I, I kind of forgot because 2020, <laughs> there were virtually none except for the NFR. And then in 2021, the first half of the year, there were none. And so like <clears> – <throat> We did the we did the stock shows this year and like completely caught us off guard. You know, we were ready and we did them and we manned them and it all worked out. But I thought, but I, I guess prior to twenty twenty, we had so little people on the on the uh, team and it was just easier for me personally to go to all of them. You know, so that was one less person that we had to account for for working them. And yeah, it's been two years since we've really gone to gone to booths yeah two full years that's wild that's when we were traveling like every weekend we were going somewhere all the time yeah there was because <clears throat> yeah so anyways it kind of snuck up on me we're, we're going to take another one it'll be depending on pay depends on experience <laughs> and by experience it's like can i trust the person to get in my truck with my trailer and okay. just leave <laughs> you know <laughs> And not, you know, and set exactly. it up. Exactly. And you know. see that person in your truck and everything else again. You guys ever yeah. heard of this discount Dale, Daleware website? <laughs> 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 it's really more just pulling a trailer. Like yeah. making sure the lights are hooked up. Um, so yeah. the trailers at the ranch are all two-inch balls. My, these trailers are two and five-sixteenths. So making sure you get the right ball. Don't know what we're talking about? So Don't send a video. Intelligent. <laughs> Don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Intelligent, intelligent individuals that are also people persons. Right. Yeah, it's got to be a pretty well-rounded individual. That's why, like, the perfect person, I could see, you know. Not me. Not skipping the intern <laughs> the phase. Uh, probationary period, but, but definitely working through it very quickly. They're the booth guy yeah. or gal. For sure. There's a lot of girls that can pull trailers really well. There's a lot of truckers now that are women just because they're so careful and take care of everything. And apparently they're smarter. Come to find out. I don't think that's so. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? Yeah. Excuse me. Where'd you learn that? A book? <laughs> 
I do live by a little word called strategery. <laughs> How many women do I have? Uh, one, two, three. Anyway, I think we have more women working here than we do. Yeah. And two. Three, That's about even. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's 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 more women. We have more women here than men. So I'm definitely not afraid to. There's more male interns, but as a whole, the whole company, there's there's uh, more women. Anyway, <clears throat> so not afraid to hire a woman. That's all. That's the only reason why I brought that up. So it's apparel close, right. but we've got we we potentially got a new company coming that we are starting. Don't want to say too much about it, but that will open up. Lord willing, if provided it's successful enough, that'll open up a couple jobs. Or we'll need people, for sure. It's part-time work? You looking for a job? <laughs> no, it's just part-time. It's not, really a, it's not a job if it's part-time. Well, yeah. It's not? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I think that's the last I'm part of it. <laughs> part-time job. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Leather shop gets boring. Yeah. Yeah. Here lately, My we've been... cutting out. When we're, on, when we're on task, it's been like... One at least one day of filming per d- per week, sometimes two. Yeah, I get bored. Get bored in those other days. Yeah, there's only so much leather you can do without losing your mind. Yeah, it's pretty easy to do. You've been doing leather work a long time. Yeah. What's your advice to people out there that are wanting to pick up a swivel knife? Uh, put it down <laughs> and uh, do some silver work. Really? Oh yeah, silver work. You can so say. Five hundred dollars. If I want to make five hundred dollars in a day in the shop, that's just a belt. Um, it's going to take me all day to make that, make the belt finished, packed and sent. That's from eight in the morning till eight that night. It's obviously not going to be sent because the post, post office, office is closed, closed, but it's packaged <laughs> and ready to go. Yeah. Um, silver work five hundred bucks, about three hours, packaged th- and gone. But the but the margins are the margins better? I mean, like, because like you're not as far paying as for any of it anyway. The customer's paying for the silver, right? And um, when you start out, me personally, if I don't know you, you got to you got to give me a deposit. Yeah, um, at least either half or half or full, which it's their call, just to where I know they're serious, and then uh, I use that part of the money to pay for materials and everything else, and then. Uh, get it knocked out, get the other half, and then I ship it. Do you miss doing, as far as leather work's concerned, so it's like, you know, here lately it's some kind of under-the-table custom stuff. By under-the-table, I mean it's like you're not really advertising. No, I don't post at all. Like, the only things that I've posted, I think the last thing I posted was that gun belt I made Yeah, for your neighbor. Uh, but but do no. you do you miss when you did, like, like, I don't know what it would be called. Like when you contracted for companies, yes. leather companies. People. I would, if anybody out there wants someone to tool leather, I will do that all day. That's my favorite part is just the actual tooling. Really? To where all I did for the companies that I worked for, um, <clears throat> they would send me whatever they wanted. I never had to deal with a customer. I never had to deal with anybody but the one person who I became friends with to where it was like, hey, man, it might be a few weeks and then they, we worked together really well to where all I had to do was draw it, tool it, didn't dye it, sew it or anything. Just did the artwork and mailed it to them. And then they'd either Venmo me or send me a check. Yeah. And it was, uh, that was pretty amazing. What that is it? Awesome. So, so the dyeing and the sewing is what you're not crazy about. Well, it's what people don't understand is like the dry time and everything in between. Like if you're good with your time management, you can get a lot done but it, it is so much work to do all that stuff. Like after the tooling, like your back is going to kill you. Your hands are going to hurt. You need to sit down or go stand up or go do something else for an hour while that thing's drying. And then like edging the belt, the finish work, it's not hard work, but like on the edge of a belt where it's slick and nice and pretty and makes it easy to go, you know, in and out of your belt loops. Um, nobody really understands how much elbow grease goes into it and it's I sweat more finishing a belt than I do digging a post hole 
Yeah. Like it's mm-hmm. just my my shoulders uh, end up hurting more than anything. My shoulders and my back just from edging, like slicking stuff. But I did learn the other day from Will James Leather. He posted a deal about how he does his edges. I'm an idiot. This dude made it so much easier. Like you could set it on a table and you don't have to hold it over your head. The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I always had it sitting on the table. <laughs> but he just, this his process, off. I'm not going to tell you the process, but you need to go look. If you do leather work, you need to go follow that guy because he gives all of his. Uh, Will who? Will James. I'm pretty sure. William James. I'll have to look it up. I can't remember. Um <clears throat> does really good work but he, he gives you all of his little tips yeah on his instagram and uh his finishing is oh, so much easier now but <laughs> it's like a rolling pin or something <laughs> no it's sandpaper oh but it's a process what is it about the upcoming company the part-time thing yeah uh people i'm in the shop alone like there's nobody else in there yeah i like to talk to people sometimes Sometimes. 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 So it's like <laughs> you spend a week and a half alone. Like, I don't know if you, you lose a little bit of your, uh, especially 2020, you know, didn't get to see very many people that often. And then you spend the rest of your time alone in the shop. It just kind of makes you uncomfortable when you get around a bunch of people. Yeah. Right. I kind of want to get <laughs> get comfortable again. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I gave myself anxiety for spending too much time alone. Right. So, I don't know. Conversation? Yeah. (laughs) Human touch. (laughs) I hired him to give you somebody to talk to. (laughs) Well, I mean, like, like for example, today, like, Corey Anderson, uh, great dude, stops at the house and gives me this jacket as a gift. And... I don't know. Like, I forgot how to say thank you. I yeah. Was like, oh, <laughs> this is a nice jacket. This is cool. <laughs> Put it on and didn't take it off. And yeah. Bye. Well, <laughs> what are y'all doing the rest yeah, of the day? Yeah. And then I just, I felt horrible when he left. So I had to send him a text and I was like, man, thank you so much. I love this jacket. Why don't, why didn't I say that in person? Like my brain just goes eh. compliments. I don't know how to take a compliment anymore. Yeah. I don't either. Man, that I belt get all, looks sharp. I get look, all awkward. Okay. You uh, guys must get a lot of yeah. compliments. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to do with all yeah. these. I had a boss say, not to me specifically, but he was just like, I am fully prepared to give compliments to this guy. <laughs> Whining about, nobody ever tells me good job. We were like, oh no, we're ready to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta, just gotta do I it. Am fully prepared. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I don't like being complimented. Yeah, it's just like, okay, thank you. I don't I think. Pre- I appreciate some it. people would say I give them out excessively. <laughs> I don't. I like giving compliments. I don't think people. I don't, I don't think like. my employees sometimes think I'm serious whenever I do give a compliment. Like, because <clears throat> like. So, I, I've gotten this habit of like, I'll see somebody do a good job and I'll think in my head and they're doing a good job, but then I never say it. And I just walk by and I was like, man, I need to like vocalize that to that person. Cause they might be wondering. And even if they're not the kind of person that like it, it, it crosses, you know, even if they're not the kind of person that needs it, they just literally, they just don't know if they're doing a good enough. So anyhow, like even yesterday, you know, everybody, <clears throat> All you guys worked real hard to get. The, oh, that's right. You've been gone. All those guys <laughs> <laughs> worked real hard to get the ranch cleaned up while I was gone. And uh, I was like, dude, they killed it. They did. They, re- they did a really they did good a job. Really good job. And I said, man, you guys did a really good job. And uh, I really meant it. But Everybody's I thought waiting later, for the punchline. Like, <laughs> but I was like, man, I hope they knew that I meant that because, like, I don't. Okay. Well, then we'll go down this road. <laughs> So I'd been here a little over a month and uh, we were directing something that I'd written and in Donnie's camera bag, there's a bunch of hundred dollar bills and I was hurting <laughs> pretty hard for money at the time, but I, I wasn't, I was just noticing like, holy crap. I was like, Donnie, what are you doing with all that money in your bag? And Dale just looks up and goes, you need some? I was like, no, I was just 
It's just there's like a thousand dollars in there. I was just wondering. It's in the camera bag, and he like picks it up, counts it, puts it in his pocket, and then he takes one and just like nonchalantly, so nobody sees it, like puts it in my pocket. And I remember leaving him like, "Wow, like that's gonna go a long ways. Like I'm gonna be able to eat at Jerry's for a week. Like that's really exciting." I was even just like so, just like he said, "Good job, that's awesome." And I get in the pickup, and it's a fake dollar bill. It's movie money, and I remember just like being so, like, so defeated, like, just, just, just immediately crashes. Like, oh, I hope he thought that was funny. Go. Hey man, keep up the good work. Yeah. <laughs> This is a pretty cool job. You are worth <laughs> every bit of this. You are worth this much. <laughs> Don't worry. There's more where that came from. <laughs> um, you, you buy like $100,000 worth of fake money. <laughs> it's all on hundreds. Oh, There's yeah. plenty. There's yeah, plenty it's more. everywhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't feel bad about that. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. Because, <laughs> like, you know, most jokes, you know, your your level of humor is, you know, usually really, you oh, know. Oh, mine? Sometimes. Yeah. It's no, kind I, of up there. You yeah. know, it's like the average bear. And so the fact that, like, a fake hundo got by you. <laughs> what an <laughs> idiot. Didn't, didn't see it coming at all. I will say, though, that money does look really real. Yeah, and no. then at the top, it's like where it's supposed to say United States or whatever. It does say for motion pictures, for motion only. pictures only. Yeah, because somebody's, I guess, some kids got a hold of some. Not from me, but uh, at the San Antonio stock show, we got a, <laughs> started spending it. We got a, <laughs> we, we got an email. It's like, hey, look out for counterfeit bills. And then, like a couple days later, we found another one. And in this email, like it's going out to all the exhibitors at the at the San Antonio stock show. And the second warning had a picture of the bill and it was one of those. And I was like, I don't even feel bad. It's a different size, <laughs> you know? Meanwhile, it's like you're just bad with every t-shirt. It's a different color. <laughs> it's a different color <laughs> and a different size, you know? And so, like, I, I almost don't feel bad. I know no. it had to have been, like, just the littlest old lady who just would never imagine and some kid – just like, <laughs> oh, man, I got this old lady. You know, d- doesn't even know that it's wrong yet. Yeah. You know, just like, and uh, handed her, and was just more excited the fact that it got away with it anyway. So <clears throat> that's it was the same money, yeah, for yeah. motion pictures only. Yeah, yeah, I have that. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm well. I'm not sorry. I make fun of you all the time. That's just our relationship. You don't. You don't discriminate either when you make fun of people. No. Yeah, and I'm just masking. Yeah, and sometimes you don't masking need insecurity. Pain. Masking insecurity <laughs> more than anything. More than anything. I really, just Hopefully. bury my tears behind yeah. laughter. Kind of just like a little bully. <laughs> a little bully. Can't anybody? You got to say that. Oh, you're just a little bully. Oh. <laughs> I made fun of this guy. What was it? We, I don't remember which intern it was. We were. We were, yeah, we were going out to eat somewhere, and somebody had, like, an oddly specific order for a burger. Like, you know, don't have this and this and this. And I was like, oh, do you not like that stuff on your burger? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, like, little stuff like that. Uh, obviously not. That's why I asked to not have it. That's what, yeah, and I just, I was making fun of them being picky because, like, I'm not a picky eater, so when other people are picky, I just think it's, like, a weird thing to, I don't know. No, you ate the Tostino's pizza Did rolls that have been in the freezer for seven years. They were delicious. <laughs> Did y'all give each other a hard time a lot growing up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, probably. Yeah. Yeah, no, you had to be. Yeah, <laughs> Our we were... entire family is all smart asses. So yeah. okay. that was like a big part of everything. That's how y'all up. communicated. Oh, for sure. 100%. Sarcasm. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, uh, <clears throat> so where did this come from? Our dad. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you listening and not watching, I, y'all both do that. A I lot. threw my right hand out, <laughs> and pretty much you punch your um, hip. Throw your throw your right hand out and punch your hip. Turn your toes in just a little, and then like drop your head, <laughs> like bounce your head down. When you're like, making a point, yeah. <laughs> sometimes with both, sometimes yeah. you punch both hips, leaves your arms at a triangle. Well, and you say, yeah. it's 100%, 100% our old man. Or just like, has anyone seen the stapler? <laughs> you do your arms like that. <laughs> yeah, no, de- definitely. I, I just, Did uh, you know that 
the Ukraine and Russia are at war. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's how our dad. That's how my dad. I just I know it's what it's from because like our uh, like my mom you know just always talks like this and everything. But dad, dad is just always doing something. If you if you're not seeing it for the camera, uh, you know screw that. It's no, it's no point in explaining it and everything. But dad is just always, you know, he just talks with his hands. It's always close like this. And just, he's an artist. So he's always like, imagine he's drawing something. And just you know, whenever he, dad's looking at concrete or something, that's just how he does it. He just looks at it. Uh, I don't know if this is, I don't know if this he is He also work. poured concrete. He doesn't just stare at the ground a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just look at concrete. Sorry. Should, should have explained that. But yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, the, we're a heavy, sarcastic family. It has mostly, it has more to do with our sense of humor than anything else. Because, like I said, Dad didn't believe in TV channels, so we just had a bunch of movies. Well, it was whatever movies Dad brought home. So we grew up watching, like, Gilligan's Island and Green Acres and just all this, like, old humor, but then also just extremely dry humor. And that's just how, like, we've, I don't know, we've all known it because, like, everybody in the families brought over, you know, a girlfriend or boyfriend and they immediately, like, you can tell immediately if they were going to make it because they didn't laugh at the movie we were watching. And, like, prime example, Raising Arizona with Nicolas Cage. You guys ever seen that movie? No. no. It's hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, there's no point to explain it. It's just, it's incredibly dry humor that our family, we think it's the greatest. I can imagine with Nicolas Cage. Oh, yeah. it's great. Uh, it's one of his first movies. and um, It's a comedy about what are kidnapping the, babies. And yeah. if you don't laugh at it, it's yeah. Pretty, uh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty morbid. <laughs> no. What What are the headlines of the stories that you would use in your stand up comedy? Just the headlines. You don't have to tell the whole joke. In In my stand up comedy, yeah, a lot of it would be would be growing up. Yeah, uh, I remember my dad. Well, really? Because so far nothing's been funny. That, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a way better setup than anything I'm about to say. <laughs> I was just like, casting real slow out there. I think just just observational, you know, like <laughs> observation. I remember one time, and my dad, my dad. I know my dad watched all this. I love you, dad. But there was a funny, funny story when I remember we were uh, putting tarps on this hay we had stacked outside for the horse, and. I remember my dad was just getting really frustrated because the it was the wind was blowing pretty hard, and I was on top holding the tarp down, and all of a sudden I just kind of hear like it, like a rustling down there, and I see down there, and Dad's like punching the tarp because <laughs> it keeps whipping him in the face. Yeah, love you, Dad. And the the snip snip story, which one? Oh yeah, I told. I don't want to tell it. Yeah, I, I'll tell you later. Yeah, I told him about <laughs> told him about Dad. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll get to it. Uh, mine are right now it's my hemorrhoid PSA <laughs> <laughs> and um uh my cameo um customer I'm oh, waiting that, that one out yeah. I'm in the middle right, of that right. story and so <laughs> like ongoing. I'm yeah, hoping that it doesn't ends. turn into like <laughs> more of a headline not in stand-up comedy but like the news cameo killer right <laughs> so yeah, I've got a return customer who re requests videos of me on Cameo, and right. uh, so far, I mean, I mean, he asked me to <laughs> fart in a video. Have I told? I haven't told you this. No. So, okay. No. How did he ask? Like um, politely? Did he describe the kind of fart? Hold on. <laughs> can we get a squeaky one, please? <laughs> a curious. Can, um, can you? Put have a, I not told you either? Yeah, I, was, I, I, I you briefed you on it yesterday. Yeah, can you put a question mark at the end? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't want to say his name. We'll just go with Brad. The occasion, humor talk. Instructions, share your thoughts regarding fart humor. <laughs> I always got a good laugh out of a fart jokes with my buddies. That was the first request. That, yeah. So you were just like, yeah, they're funny. That but, was I mean, the first yeah, request. Farts, are, farts have always been funny. Yeah. The second request really eased you in here mind you these are 24 hour requests so the price is more expensive than the normal four day right time limit that they give me yeah you know 150 dollars is what it's costing him <laughs> wow five cameos later <laughs> he's wanting me to put also a belch in there you gotta start drinking more topo yeah, the fifth one was hard. Like I had to start and stop it <laughs> and redo it a bunch because like it didn't have a fart and a 
Perfect. What are you doing in there? <laughs> so five of them. I'm working. <laughs> can you can you start doing these videos outside? I'm trying to provide for my family. Good Lord. So I'm trying to keep the lights on. <laughs> I work all day. At least stay in your office when you're doing it. You don't have to come out. Too. I don't get the. I don't get the full $150 because Cameo takes their cut. I get 111 so I've done five of these. Dude, how many I will people, say yeah. after the f- before the fifth one, I did hesitate. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> this is getting weird. And, <laughs> ultimately, I sent it on. <laughs> what kind of a dark road can this flatulence take me? <laughs> so my I don't, Cameo uh, isn't, isn't anything like that. I don't, I don't advertise my Cameo. I you I don't have, I talked about it in one podcast one time just right. because like because sometimes I'll send a video to people that DM me I will text I'll you know like when I if I advertise anything it's my apparel right you know or the Netflix show those are the two big things that I I throw sponsorship stuff in but that's a little more marketing <laughs> and branding that's not like a hard sell you know if I send people to my cameo that's a hard sell so anyhow the reason I say that is that's why I felt it completely normal for me to go up in price and the only reason i went up it's not that i think that my time is necessarily worth that much but i started missing them so people would apply of course you don't get charged if i don't do them but i got to where it's like i would let them expire or whatever you know uh, because I, I wouldn't get to them. You're using so, so many fart puns. I can't. <laughs> you, that's all you're thinking about? <laughs> that's all I'm thinking about. <laughs> so, like, I started up in the price, you know, because it's like, you know, it would help me have a sense of urgency. <laughs> Good push. And, <laughs> and so, anyway, I, um, yeah, so the price went up. And, and the normal price is not $150. That's right. the 24 hour turnaround price. Yeah. You know, and so, like, yeah, five days in a row. Did the? I was just thinking of like you, yours are so much more like PG. Like people want like videos of my of my feet and, and take your socks off slow. <laughs> no, oh. dude, this is eerily <laughs> similar to that. Did we tell yeah, you? That's, that's, that's what I, I mean. I don't like, video my feet. If I do, it's on accident, and I'm holding my phone and not paying attention and getting yeah. paid you for it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like I, there. Say happy birthday to no, your I friends. Didn't. Also, I'll fart for money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't sold any feet pics or videos. It was just that was too odd for me. I, I turned the uh, I turned the fellas over here last night onto a little documentary on HBO called Tickled. It was sounds disturbing. I had oh, to yeah. walk out oh. for a little bit. Oh, it is. Cole promptly <laughs> fell asleep. Oh, yeah. After he's like, "Oh, you guys gotta watch this." We did finish it. Like you did have to see how it ended. And then we woke Cole up by tickling the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. Rightfully this so. This is so yeah. weird. So is it real bad if you have kids? Does it involve kids? No. Uh, okay, good. No, yeah. D- no. Okay. Yeah. But it is, it's weird. Yeah. It's it's definitely strange. Is it a show or a documentary? Docu- it's a documentary. documentary. Okay. Gotcha. Like, yeah. when it starts off, I was like, this is going to be funny. And then it started going, and I was like, I'd, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. This yeah. isn't funny anymore. <laughs> well. I got real serious. I've got an alarm, cameras, for you. and the right to bear arms. So, um, in no way were we threatening to break in yeah, and we're tickle, not you. tickle you. Of course you weren't. I know that. I'm just saying. If the cameo killer is out oh. there, oh right, you know, I'm just. I assume that's what the show Tickled was about, like a weird something. Dude, there was no murder. It yeah. was strictly tickling. Mm. It was. Extremely just uncomfortable. Tickled. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I'm going to have to check that out. Where's Probab- it? Probably Who not. knew the tickling could ruin so many lives? Right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that intro was good. See, I feel like this is just really s- similar to my fart cameos. So, yeah, so yeah. it took me forever yeah, to do yeah. the fifth one. You know, I just didn't have it in me. Ironically, I had a lot of. <laughs> Thanks for really just winding down there. And uh, so I finally got it out, and um, okay, and then had some had some more, and so I I filmed a few backups like in case he 
He's came <laughs> back. <laughs> so you're <laughs> telling me on your phone there's a folder of just fart files. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're in high just school in again. Case. <laughs> <laughs> there's some fart. There's some fart files, and then there's some fart burp combos. So. Oh, that's 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 the stuff that keeps you going. <laughs> in one in one of the requests, he randomly <clears throat> volunteered that uh, Brad randomly volunteered that he's into cosplay and medieval stuff. Didn't know what cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprising. So yeah, yeah, I don't want that. I had to Google what cosplay was. So. I might be doing fart cameos. <laughs> Where in a, I in a night. <laughs> It's for work. <laughs> in a night uniform. <laughs> we got to get you off this cameo. Man, this is going way too far. Hey, will you please <laughs> stop using my podcast mic to record your yeah. farts? <laughs> like it's <laughs> I'm I'm the kind of I mean I fart in a lot of Snapchats. So like, you know, like maybe that's just That's one got, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they're yes, just that was free. That, that yeah, was free for right, y'all. Yeah. Okay, I'm not. You don't have to pay the hundred and eleven dollars. Somebody <laughs> has to pay. It'll be. Yeah. I'm talking <laughs> real money, dude. I like the thought of you just five hundred and fifty-five dollars has gone into my bank account from that. <laughs> for like you just get a reputation. This is like I just said another <laughs> thing that you're known for now. It's like well, oh, I, if you uh, liked it, <laughs> you liked his Snapchats, <laughs> like. Fellow uh, fart enthusiasts, <laughs> check out this rodeo guy on YouTube. <laughs> I'm getting invited to conferences. And I'm speaking at the. I'm speaking. At the high flatulence speaker. conference. <laughs> Our high school English teacher, Miss Baxter's eating her words. Yeah, who's, who's laughing yeah. now? Making money on my fart. Yes, yeah, so send me to the office. Yeah. <laughs> one day, one day, I'm gonna make money off chase, of this. Chase your uh, dreams. Oh, Thanks, man. Cody Johnson. Your dreams uh, don't chase you back. Uh, <laughs> Miss Baxter is the bomb. I love that lady. Um, She's cool. Anyway, yeah. So that's how I'm making money these days. She laughed so at my part. kids, she out of class. like you can really do anything you want. That is the worst advice we've ever <laughs> given on a podcast. <laughs> well, I mean, within reason of right and wrong, you know. I mean, he's towing the line over here. <laughs> I'm just saying, give it. I mean, you never. I don't know. Use what you got. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so that's so, what I've been up to. So over the next segment, have you ever sent a Snapchat of your poop? Ha- I haven't. No I'm kidding. Oh. Be a man. Be a man. What's yeah. that? <laughs> that? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see I, that you like them every yeah, now. Exactly. Just, <laughs> yeah, Lane Snyder liked this. I'm just yeah. like, they are funny. Yeah. What's that guy's name? He's like, flip out for no reason. Make everybody uncomfortable. <laughs> Be a man. <laughs> they're, they're so good. They're like, if you ca- don't hug your kids, be a man. <laughs> if, you, if you can't find something in the hardware store, don't ask for help. Walk out. Be a man. <laughs> Walk out. Be a man. <laughs> yeah. And then the most recent one was, if you take a giant, take a picture of it, send it to your buddies. Be a man. <laughs> The other thing that makes him makes which we got to do this is like he has buddies filming him in the background just laughing hysterically. Exactly. It's That's like what the, makes oh, those good, it's, right? It's like the applauso. Hey bigger. guys, I got yeah. a good one coming. Y'all get over here. And so <laughs> need some laughter in the background. <laughs> well, I'm saying like in our videos, maybe we get get oh, a green screen. That's how you're talking about for your two dick. <clears throat> That's what we should do. Uh, That's our next video. Okay. It's like, um, let's make it seem like. Like the rodeo shows. <laughs> we'll just the knock him audience. off. We'll tag him. Uh, I'm game. After the rodeo, go to the bar with your spurs on. Be a bull rider. <laughs> <laughs> Be a bull rider. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you didn't get on. Uh, dumper. <laughs> Be a bull rider. That's the guy, too. Uh, <laughs> Fart in a video. Do a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> Get bucked off. Celebrate like you won. Be a bull rider. Be a bull rider. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. And then just have people in the background laughing hysterically. So we we're coming for you. Hashtag be a man. Yeah. Start a podcast. Lane, we recorded a podcast once. Remember over the phone? Mm-hmm. It pretty much descended into just us laughing at inside jokes, though. Like, yeah, yeah. it wasn't, wasn't going to be good. I mean, it just, it went, it just 
so this is probably the first time I've ever actually talked into a microphone, but like when we and you did it, that was just, it was super funny because it just deteriorated into <laughs> whatever kind of BS we were going to talk about, whatever, yeah. whatever podcasts we listen to. Yeah. <laughs> bringing up book, what books you've been reading. Yeah. You know, it was tough. Podcast your heart. Yeah. I read about a page a day. Are you still reading about face? I feel like you've just had it about, with you for like a year. It's a big book. It is and a big I, and book. I, I reread I reread a bunch of that. If you're about face, Colonel David Hackworth, dude. I've listened to Jocko break it down. A that's few times. I finally just yeah, and I had it. So I figured I'd read it. Uh guy he joined the military when he was fifteen, like right at the tail end of World War Two, served through Korea, like went to work at the Pentagon and stuff, then went to Vietnam. Like awesome, awesome book. Uh I had to reread it. It's like a thousand pages long in I think I'm I think I'm three books away from reading every book that was been written about our most recent war. Yeah, I've got, I've got them all not nailed down. I guarantee you there's about to be so many more of them coming out too. I mean, as there should be, a lot of them. It well, hadn't like, ended that long ago. Yeah, but it died down all, the, the last few years. It hasn't been near as like that we a lot of, of books written about like the early two thousands. Like, but because a lot of you know when it was like heavy, heavy. Did you ever yeah. read um uh, L- Lone Survivor? <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> just, a I just finished <laughs> Alone at Dawn. Ah. About John Chapman, the combat controller. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. That was a long book. Yeah. Where do you find the time to read so much? Well, I was on the road. Oh, yeah. Were you so, reading or were you listening? I've read about half of it, listened to about half of it. So. I like to have the physical copy as a trophy, even if I do end up just. <laughs> I feel like that's to pretty vain, <laughs> isn't it? Well, I mean, isn't it the, the man? I will, I, I will I do say the this: exact same thing. I've though. traveled Is, with this man no, for almost well my whole life, and uh, if he's not in the front seat, even if he is in the front seat, and you put a book in his lap, you're going to pull over every thirty minutes for him to throw up. It's not. Uh, so I mean, I don't think it's. It's not my vanity. I've definitely got some vanity, <laughs> but also like. I mean, like, I I might lose my phone one day, but you know, it'd be nice to have that book. Right. No, I I totally support it. I just I I can't do audiobooks is all. Like I, I and can't. so we grew up on audiobooks. I've read yeah, a lot of books. Know. I've listened to a lot of books, and I will say, give me like a week after finishing, and my retention from having read a book compared to listen to it, very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. So, like, because I, I used to read a lot, and then I went through a few years where, like, I would say, like, the last three or four where I've not read a lot. I right. mean, it's the Bible, and that is it. Yeah. And but, I've, I've recently picked them back up because of Lone Survivor. Right. I felt like, <laughs> I mean, he's my best friend. And he wrote two books. I need to read them. Yeah. Lane turned me on. Lane got me to start because uh, Louis Lamore books. Yeah. He used to read a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't my know. My brother in law, Chet, got me in on those. Yeah. We just I like every, it, it was like one thing where somebody gave, we got a bunch of them from somewhere. Yeah. And then, dude, by the time it was all said and done, we had mostly like all, every Western Louis Lamore book that he ever wrote. We just had so many of them. So that, that was what I read like all the time. Yeah. And then I found it really difficult to read anything else. So it wasn't like people getting shot. Or, yeah. You know, like cowboy stuff. I kind of also feel like I owe it to the author to have like a physical, a physical copy, copy of the book. Yeah. I don't know. <coughs> Definitely That's, some of the war books I've read lately. Yeah. Like the, uh, anyway. Well, that and then you have them. And if somebody's like, man, I really want to read that. Well, I already read it. Here, yeah, I, lo- it. I loaned one to... I've I've been sw- I'll do a war book and then like a a Christian book. That's how it's worked lately. Nice. So what's his name? Is it C.S. What's his name? C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. I've knocked out three of his. I'm on his. I'm on a, my fourth one of his. Some Andy Andrews. He's, he's like, no, he used to read a lot of Andy. He's, Andrews. he's just more motivational. I, yeah, I like his books. Hundred percent Christian based. But here lately, I've not. I'm not kind of on that train as of lately. Yeah. Uh, no, when we were in the Traveler's Gift. It's yeah, maybe one of the most impactful books I've ever read. Right. read. Yeah, I read it. Your mom times. gave me that book when I was down here. It was yeah. like I read it, and then it was that was the only book I had yeah. out there for the longest time. So <laughs> I've read like that read book it. twice. I think that might be the only book outside of something in the Bible that I've read twice. Yeah. But um, 
What have you been reading, Lane? Uh, Not a lot of anything, really. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of gave it up. (laughs) Kind of. I heard it's bad for you. Yeah. Uh, Gives you ideas. No, I listen to a lot of books. I don't have a lot of time to, like, sit and read. But, like, when we're doing, when I'm working most of the time, right, or I'm driving, I drive, I end up driving a few hours every day for work. Like, I can listen to a podcast or a book. I can knock a lot of them out in a week, really, Yeah, you know? So, but. Yeah, most of, if I'm not on the road, then it's, like, in the morning. Like, this morning, so, like, I have not read out of the book. Like, I've very little of Greg's book have I read out of the book, which he gave me. So, that's the other thing. Some of these books are books that were given to me. But like I'm almost to the end of his. I've I've listened to most of his, but <clears throat> it's just pretty easy to follow. You know, I mean, it's a story. It's somebody telling a story. It's like listening to a super long podcast, right? So, <clears throat> um, anyhow, you know, so like I ran this morning and then worked out. I got in, you know, a good hour and a half of his book. So, dude's done Wild a lot runner. of crap, by the way. He Sorry, what? I said that dude has done a lot of crap, by the way. Yeah. Um. That's um, Death Waits in the Dark. Six mm. Guns Don't Miss. Yeah. Add I think to the, the list. list. Huh? No, I didn't know. Yeah, the last thing I read, I think, was probably a Louis L'Amour book. And then I read a check gave me a, it's like a page or two every day, a little devotional thing I read in the mornings. Yeah. I've kind of read it since Lynn got here, since he's taking up so much of my time. <laughs> I'm actually reading two at <laughs> yeah, the same time that. right no, now. I, I, I didn't alternate today. this. So it's like Greg's book. And uh, the Death Waits in the Dark, Six Guns Don't Miss is military. And then the Christian one is uh, Matt Chandler's Explicit Gospel, which is pretty good. I'm almost done with that one. So mm-hmm. I've kind of been alternating rather than finish yeah. one. Because Greg's book is super long. Yeah. I remember, Lane, you, you always put a Louis the More books on tape. Like, that's what we'd fall asleep to at night. Remember? Chick yeah. Audrey. Like, just like, but not the, not just the audio books where it was like the story. There were sound effects and everything. And like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were pretty sweet. They were I pretty mean, awesome. Nobody really does them like that anymore. No, it's a shame. But it was, that was, yeah, I don't even know where I got those. They were just tapes. Books and tapes. You uh, like, rent, you check them out from the library. Yeah, that's what, I, our, re- that's what our puppies I appreciated and, that about like Alone at Dawn where they, they did like a little bit more effort into like, you know, getting into when it, when they read a quote, you know, like using the enunciation they needed to rather than just like reading it. Yeah. But acting it out, that's another level. <laughs> right. I wish, I, I wish just, just once I'd like another like a Western novel or something to have sound effects like. Yeah. Yeah. All the stuff. Some of Baxter Black poems, like oh, yeah. he had some of that in there. Yeah. Like when I was a kid, I had a tape and I would over and over the buckskin mare. It's like this 15 minute long poem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like the gunshots in it. He's got the gunshots and rocks falling when they're going down the, you know, you can hear yeah. the sound effects. That is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you played that thing all the time. Yeah. We didn't have cable either. Yeah. I, I think you're better off without it. Netflix yeah. though is a must. <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy who wants our Netflix <laughs> password. Yeah. That's not going to do you any good watching The Office. So you need to get something else for The Office. Peacock. Peacock has The Office. Oh, I no, I don't really. And the first two seasons are free. Right. That's so, the only reason I know. I don't really, I don't really need it though. Am I missing out on that much by not watching The Office? Yeah, you are. I feel like I I'm mean, you're not going to catch half the jokes in in our office. Yeah, that's the best part. There has to be one stone faced guy not laughing. Keep everybody in check. Well, That's the rest of the people. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that just wasn't funny. <laughs> Life advice is how we end these. What you got, Lane? Well, you think about it. We caught you off guard. All what right. do you have, Cole? Uh, well, I just got back from vacation um, in San Pedro, Belize. And uh, sometimes it just pays to take some time and think. I have a hard time relaxing. Uh some would say that's a good quality about me, but like I I can't. It probably took me 3 days to like it actually sleep in down there. So um I don't know. Sometimes it's time. Why you're good at it here? I really I wasn't there. I was there like four thirty every day. Like it did, didn't matter how what happened the night before. Like I just be up at four thirty, just like watching the ocean and everything. Like, man, I really should be relaxing and stuff. It took me like a couple of days to to cool off. So I don't know. Um, you ran. I did. 
Yeah. I, just, I didn't know what that was. Yeah, that's, that's how I run. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Learn how to, if you can take a few minutes out of your day, even if it's like 10 minutes while you're, while you're drinking coffee or something, just to, I don't know, sometimes just, sometimes you got to be okay with the, like, all the voices in your head, like, just to quiet them down. Like, pretty much everybody's day, you've always got something planned, like an audio book or music, or you listen to somebody talk, but, like, actually be able to sit in silence for a few minutes, even if it's only, like, 10 minutes. That's pretty, pretty good stuff. What you got, Leroy? Well, since he kind of said what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, like with leather work, when you do something for so long and you still love it, it's okay to take a break from it. But when you come back, you got to come back with a little bit more tenacity in what you're doing than, uh, than you were doing it with when you stopped. Because if you don't, it's not fun. You gotta, you gotta keep loving it. I guess you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, keep on keeping on. You're good at it. Keep doing it. If it doesn't make you happy, don't do it. <laughs> I I uh, listening to like it's crazy all these books, and maybe it's just the timing in my life. Uh, but like this listening to like the Navy SEALs talk in their books about like training, even like Marines and the Dakota Meyer book and um but definitely David Goggins talks about it a lot but like suffering and what you can learn and suffering and and now I'm you know knee deep in explicit gospel by Matt Chandler and you know he's in the chapter I was just listening to this morning he goes into detail about like suffering yeah. and there's like verses in the Bible that a lot of people like misuse so like uh, I think it's in Isaiah like six seven maybe where it's like you know, who will go, and it's and he says, like, I will go, here I am, send me, and it's a verse that's on a lot of coffee cups, and then Matt Chandler points out, well, like, it goes on to say that, like, he actually ends up going and preaching to a crowd who will not receive the message. Right. Their hearts are hard, and so it's like the mission is ultimately a failure. You know, it's like you go and, op- you know, start a church, and then nobody goes to it. Yeah. That's ultimately what's going to happen. And it's, it's just like we expect life or we, we try our best to make life this comfortable thing when really, like, there absolutely will be suffering no matter what. You know, like, even if you think about it in, like, a realistic term, you know, like, nobody lives forever. So <clears throat> even as comfortable as your life might be, eventually you're going to lose somebody, you know. And, and in the midst of that, I think it's it's where we can learn that, that and to be at peace with, knowing you know where our salvation lies in christ and that even when this life passes away like that we still have that you know that's where the the peace and the joy can come from but it's crazy you know because like every day you know i get up and try to go through life and and like one thing goes wrong and it's just like oh you know it's just like as if I had just lived a hundred days in a row <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> where nothing went. You know what I mean? You know, it's like yeah. things go wrong. That's what happens yeah. all the if, time. Be weird if they didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and I know, and, I, and I'm Lord. about to read my next book that after yeah. the next Christian book I've, I've got planned to read is the problem of pain by CS Lewis. I haven't, I don't, I, I know that it's about pain and it's him talking about, you know, because there's a lot of those questions about like, you know, when you see like a kid hurting and everything, and that, that there's questions there that are hard to answer. But essentially the point is, is just like there will be this thing in life called suffering. And we're, we're called to like <clears throat> live through that and keep our eyes on Christ through that to be an example of like, and it's hard sometimes. I know it is, but essentially, you know, I find myself continually surprised that it's happened even though the Bible continually warns us and lets us know that it will. Mm. Right. So, anyhow. Sound wisdom. Lane? <laughs> uh, <laughs> top that. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Like, uh, yeah, my dad always says, my, dad, my dad's word of advice is always uh, don't drink your bath water and uh, be weary of... Uh, parking lot like appliances. Like if somebody's trying to sell you appliances in a, par- in a parking lot, I mean, not saying don't buy them. It's probably a good deal, but maybe plug it in before you take it home. Dad told you that. Dad didn't tell you that. 
Oh, the second part was mine, but yeah. my dad. <laughs> dad would 100%. I mean, Wait a minute. That was a life lesson that? I learned. I mean, okay, if you guys really want me to get into it, I got it. $4 for a toaster. Why not? <laughs> Excuse me? You can put six pieces of toast in it. Statistically <laughs> speaking, this is a once in a lifetime offer. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, I don't know how many toasters they made that you could put buns and hot dogs in at the same time. <laughs> Does it but still have crumbs in it? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> parking lot appliances. Look out for them. I need bath water. Don't drink it. Metaphors there, or just just that's it. I think that's just stout. That's it. Uh, that's okay. Life advice. Yeah. In general. Gotcha. I mean, no. I think what he meant. <laughs> it is good advice just to not drink your bath water. I think what he meant though was like, don't get caught up in like all you know. I, I don't. There's got to be your something. Bath water. <sighs> Don't get it's an analogy. <laughs> it's got yeah, I know it's, it's an analogy. He's like, just don't get caught up in your own like in, in all yeah, your own like, people your own like filth. their own brand. Of, yeah, exactly. like, <laughs> fart. Yeah. Like everybody thinks their own fart. My mind loves his own brand. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, my mind's going to fart. How right did now. it go right? Back? I just took it really literally. Like hmm. that's probably not a hygienic thing to drink. So you took it literal. Yeah. Okay. Still have yeah. it. <laughs> still, still have still it. Stop taking baths. <laughs> yeah. It really made that easy. Yep. Okay. Showers are so much quicker anyway. Right? Well, thank you for all, all for listening. Again, if you're interested in the intern positions, whether it's this one or the future one, 940-353-0890. Text the word podcast if you want to know when these come up. Text the word intern if you want to know when the job comes up. Or just text me. I'll text you back. Uh, pow, pow, and on to the next one. Send a video to Rodeo 10. How do we do the... I had the cricket going. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, everybody, about the very loud. I'll, if you're in your truck right now, I'll edit it out. Turn it down. I'll, for I'll, a I'll turn it down. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you got to turn it down. Oh, these others. Yeah. <laughs>